Hey people, this video is going to be about configuration in Helix and how to deal with your config.toml file. So let me just start Helix here. And of course, one of the first commands you might want to know about and that you probably also know by now is theme. So you can just type colon theme space and then you can go through this here and try out different themes. But of course, the thing is, this is not permanent, right? So if you want to make it permanent, then you have to put it in your config file. And you can open the config file with config-open. So now I am in my config file. So I'm just gonna go through here and show you some of the settings that I have in here. And these are just examples. You can put a lot more stuff in here. This is just some of the stuff that I have and that might be useful for a beginner. Oh, and by the way, if you want to try out an option before you actually put it in here, you can use colon set dash option. You can just try it out. For example, let me just type buffer line always. And this enables the buffer line at all times. But if I exit this, of course, then it's gone again. Or oh, if you make changes here and you want to, you don't want to quit Helix to actually load the changes, then you can type config dash reload and it will reload the config file. So first things first here, my theme is that at waiter dark, that's the GNOME theme, the dark GNOME theme. I just like it, it's pretty neutral and uh, it's nothing special of course, but it's also pretty easy on the eyes. And of course I like it because it just fits the GNOME desktop environment very well. So that's why I use it. Then I have this section here, the editor section. Scroll off, I have that set to 999, so very high. What this basically does is this. Do you see it? My cursor just stays in the middle when I scroll up and down. I kind of like that. So that's why I have it set here. The next one is line number set to relative. And what that does is you can see it on the, on the, right, on the left there. I basically have, well, relative line numbers. So they're not absolute anymore, but they just depend on my cursor position. And that can be useful because now you can just type, for example, 7J, and I will go to that line exactly. And that's a little easier to type if you, if you are in a large document and the line numbers are get very large. So that's why I like it. I also have buffer line here and I have that set to multiple. And what that does is it shows the buffer line when there's more than one buffer. So yeah, just let me open a new buffer here. And now I have this other buffer here and now I can see both of my buffers up there in the buffer line. And that's kind of handy. But if I close this buffer, whoops. But if I close this buffer and I only have one buffer left, then you won't see the buffer line. So this one's also pretty handy, pretty cool. Might be good for beginners as well. This just basically just changes the cursor shape depending on the mode you're in. So in normal mode, it's a block like this. But if you go into insert mode, it changes to a, what do they call it here, a bar. So a very thin bar. And if you're in select mode, it changes to an underline. So that's useful because uh, you can immediately see what mode you're in without looking at the status bar at the bottom there. Then there's this one here, soft wrap, and that just, well, just basically wraps lines that are too long for the window. So if I make this very long here, you can see up at the top here, uh, the text uh, is wrapped. And yeah, I kind of like that as well. And this is, you know, Vim users might recognize stuff like this. I just use this to basically, when I'm in insert mode, I just type FJ 
to immediately get to normal mode again without having to move my hands away from the home row. You always want to stay at the home row. So you, what you can also do is you can, a lot of Vim users and probably also a lot of Helix users, rebind their caps lock key to escape. But I can't do that because my caps lock key is already bound to something else. So what I do is I do this. I just type FJ or JF and I will go immediately into insert mode. And it's very easy. I'm super used to that. It's pretty handy. You can also do JJ or FF or FJ or whatever you want, really. Doesn't really matter. Then I have this here. This is also kind of a Vim thing. And what this does is if I use the curly braces here in normal mode, I will jump to the next paragraph. And the difference to Vim here is that in Helix, this is immediately highlighted or selected. So yeah, I just kind of like that. It's a Vim thing. I'm kind of used to that as well. Although now I maybe I use just I just use Control D and U more. I don't know. And this is just the same thing for for select mode. This section here is for indent guides. Yeah, this basically just creates these indent guides. Uh, this you know when. You can change the type here. So for example, this is just a simple bar, but I can also just make it look like this if you want to. And what this does is that if you indent stuff here, you will see these indent guides. So then you can see, you know, how deep the indentation is here very easily. So yeah, guys, that's basically my config file more or less. Like I had some more stuff in here in the past, but I ended up not really using most of that, so I just got rid of it. And technically I wouldn't, I don't even need some other stuff. For example, I could get rid of this as well. Maybe I would, maybe I will do that in the future. I don't know. But yeah, I mean, that's one of the great advantages of using Helix is that you don't need a lot of configuration. It's just mostly just good, good by default. You don't need to install, you know, two dozen plugins to make it usable. It, it just mostly just works by default, you know, so that's pretty cool. So I will put this stuff into the description if you want to copy it. And yeah, if you have any cool configuration options to share for Helix, just put them in the comments, guys. Okay, see you in the next video. Bye.